to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin. This is the gospel of Christ to proclaim good news unto the poor. The gospel of Christ, spreading the soul-saving message of Jesus. And now, Ben Bailey. This is the gospel of Christ. My brethren, let not many of you become teachers, knowing that we shall receive a stricter judgment. James chapter 3, verse number 1. We welcome you today to our study of the book of James. The book of James is all about faith in action. And today, we're thinking about a big part of pure or undefiled religion being our ability to control the tongue. Have you ever said anything that later you look back on and regret it? All of us have from time to time. Friend, what can we do to learn about the tongue and to better control it, to use it to God's glory? That's exactly what James is going to teach us about today. And so we hope that you'll have your Bible ready as we're going to be looking to the Word of God in our study today. Friend, we're so glad that you've joined us for our broadcast. And we want you to know that today's lesson is being brought to you by individual Christians and members of the Churches of Christ. The Church of Christ in your area would love for you to stop by and visit their assembly. Whether it be their worship on Sunday or Bible study on Wednesday, you'd be an honored guest at any of their assemblies. If you've got a question, maybe about something that you've heard, maybe you'd like to learn more about the, the Lord's church or the plan of salvation or, or whatever it may be, these people would be happy to sit down with you, open up God's Word, and let God's Word be the final authority on everything that we say and do. And friend, we want to help you as well at the gospel of Christ. Our whole aim and our, our whole mission is to take the whole gospel to the whole world. We are not concerned about your wallet. We're not concerned about your money. That's not what our emphasis is. We want to take the gospel to the world. And so we hope you'll check out our website, thegospelofchrist.com. From there, you can find a wide variety of good Bible study material. All of our DVDs and CDs are available. Audio lessons are available from our website, as well as transcripts, written material, just a good host of Bible study material, and it's all free of charge. If you'd like to have a copy of our study of the book of James or any of our lessons that we've done in the past, they're available to you free of charge. You can download them from our website. Just fill out a media request form and select a digital download. Or if you need a hard copy on DVD or CD, we're also happy to send that to you free of charge as well. And be sure in the fast-paced world that we're living in right now where everybody's got a smartphone, be sure to check out our apps both in the Android and Apple Store. It's a great way to study God's Word on the go. Today, as we think about James chapter 3, we're going to contemplate the power of the tongue and our need to let God control it. And especially, James is going to begin with those who are teachers of the Word of God. Look again in James chapter 3, verse number 1. James says, My brethren, let not many of you become teachers, knowing that we shall receive a stricter judgment. When we think about uh, the, the words that we speak, especially for someone who's teaching the Word of God, James says, let not many of you become teachers. Why? We will receive a stricter judgment. Is James trying to discourage people from teaching? No, that's not the idea. James is not trying to keep people from teaching but rather to warn them of the stern and serious responsibility of being a teacher of God's Word. Well, someone says that if it's the case that we're going to have a stricter judgment, well, nobody, why would anybody want to be a teacher? Well, friend, here's what it all comes down to. If we do this, if we speak 
as the oracles of God. 1 Peter 4, verse 11. If we give book, chapter, and verse, a thus saith the Lord for what we teach, and if we support the ideas of the Word of God from the Word of God, then, friend, it's not my Word, but it's the very Word of God that's being taught. Keeping our own opinion, our own ideas, our own bias, I think, no, that's not what we need to hear. I want to know, is there any word from the Lord? Jeremiah 37, verse 17. I want to know, what does the Scripture say? Romans 4, verse 3. And so, to, to, to keep the focus on less of what I think and more and only of what God thinks, that's how the Christian teacher can make sure on the judgment day that he can stand approved before Almighty God. But then James is going to shift from just thinking about uh, the teacher who has to be very careful when he stands up before people to teach the Word of God to every Christian controlling his tongue. Look at James chapter 3, and I want you to notice the ability to control the tongue. That's a sign of a mature Christian. Look at what James says in James 3 verse 2. James says, For we all stumble in many things, if anyone does not stumble in word, he is a perfect man, able also to bridle the whole body. Flip back, if you would, to James chapter 1. And I want you to hear what James says about this in James 1, verse 26 also. James says, if anyone among you thinks he is religious, listen to this, and does not bridle his own tongue, but deceives his heart, that one's religion is vain or useless. If somebody says, I'm a religious person, and then they go about gossiping, or saying words they ought not to say, or using their tongue in an ungodly way, James says, their religion's worthless. They can't even control their own tongue. They haven't let God have control over their life. And so James says, there's no doubt. We all stumble in many things. I heard, heard someone once say this. He said, that old tongue, he said, it's in a, in a wet place. You better watch it. It's liable to slip. And friend, that's exactly right. We all stumble in many ways. From time to time, every one of us makes mistakes. We've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Romans 3, verse 23. Like the writer of Ecclesiastes said in Ecclesiastes 7, verses 26 through 29, there's none righteous. No, not one. Uh, even the most righteous person on the earth has to deal with the sin problem, Romans 3, verse 10, and Romans 3, verse 23. And so since we all stumble from time to time, James will say, if anyone doesn't stumble with his tongue, he's a perfect man. Uh, friend, we want to be careful. Well, here's the idea James is trying to get across. The tongue has so much power to do good or to do evil. We've got to do our best to keep it in check. In fact, while you're thinking about this, I want you to hold your finger in the book of James, and would you flip over to Proverbs chapter 18 with me? I want you to see what the proverb writer says about the power of the tongue. Proverbs chapter 18, look in verse number 21. You know, sometimes we hear people say, you know, sticks and stones can break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Friend, that is false to the core. The Bible teaches in Proverbs 18, 21 that words can actually do great good or damage. Death and life are in the power of the tongue and those who love it will eat its fruit. And so as Christians, we want to do our best to keep our tongue in check and to make sure that we're not saying things we need to say. You know, sometimes we need to clamp down on that tongue and really hold on to it and not say some of the things that we might say. You know, when I think about the tongue, and this is where James is going to go next, along with that idea, death and life are in the power of the tongue, James is going to show us just how much power the tongue has. He's going to give us really three illustrations to show this. James chapter 3, he's going to say the tongue is like a, a bit in a horse's mouth, able to control the whole horse. Look in James 3 and notice what the Bible says in verses 3 following. 
James says, indeed, we put bits in horses' mouths that they may obey us, and we turn their whole body. Uh, I want you to think about that little bit in the horse's mouth. What's the idea James is trying to get? You've got a, a massive 800,000 pound animal, wild animal many times, and if you can put a bridle on it and get a bit in its mouth, and here's what that bit does. That bit presses down on the tongue, and when you pull back on that, it puts pressure on the tongue, and you can control the whole animal if you can control the tongue. What's the point? The bit is small, but it controls the whole horse. It makes an unruly animal one that will obey. Controlling the bit controls the whole horse, and thus, here's the idea James is trying to get across. If we can control the tongue, it's an indicator that you've got control of the whole person. One who can think before he says something or stop himself from saying something. That's a person whose religion is real, who's got pure Christianity in his heart. And so the idea of the bit in the horse's mouth shows us that if we can control the tongue, we can control the whole person. But then look at the next illustration, James chapter 3, verse 4, to show the power of the tongue. James says it's also similar to, like, a rudder on a ship. Watch James 3, verse number 4. James says, Look also at ships, although they are so large and driven by fierce winds, they are turned by a very small rudder wherever the pilot desires. Again, think of a massive cargo ship. I mean, you're at the beach. One of these ships that is heading overseas has large containers stacked as high and as long as you can. It looks like it's the size of a football field. And what is it that's turning that ship, whichever way it goes? Now, in proportion to the ship itself, it's a pretty small rudder. Now, you see one of those in size to a part to the to me and you, it may be pretty big, but in proportion to the ship, that's pretty small. And the smaller the boat, the smaller the rudder. That's the idea. Just a small little rudder can turn a big boat any which way. It controls it through fierce winds. It moves thousands of pounds of weight with ease. The rudder has the ability to control the whole direction of that ship. What's the point James is getting at? Just like that rudder on the ship, our tongue has the power to control the whole direction of a man. If I can learn to think and to speak and to talk like the Lord wants me to talk, my whole direction in life is going to be so much better. You stop and think about people who talk in ways they ought not to talk. Colossians 3 verse 8, Ephesians 4 verse 29, let no filthy communication come out of your mouth. You hear somebody who is constantly saying four-letter words. What do you think? Well, I think the devil's got that person right where he wants him. I think the direction of his life is not being controlled by the Lord. Now, friend, can a person not say those words and still have things they need to work? Sure. But as a general indicator, I am what I say. And we need to be very careful that we say the things God wants us to say. And then look at the next example. In James chapter 3, the tongue is also powerful in that it's like a small spark that can start a great fire. Look at James chapter 3, verse number 5 following. James says, even so, the tongue is a little member and boasts great things. See how great a forest a little fire kindles? Well, what's the point, James? Here it is, verse 6. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. The tongue is so set among our members that it defiles the body and is set on and sets on fire the course of nature and is set on fire by hell. Just like that small spark. You ever been burning leaves or maybe starting a fire? And maybe you turned around for just... I remember one time as a kid we were burning leaves. I had a pretty big, big pile. Somebody drove up or something happened, kind of distracted us. And next thing you know, it got out. And boy, it took a lot of effort to get that what looked like a little bitty fire took over and went other places. What's the point? Small star, spark. Look at the fires that have occurred in places like California. 
that occurred in Gatlinburg a while back. Little bitty spark, spark, and a massive ton of destruction comes from that. If that spark and that fire isn't controlled, it is liable to wreak all kinds of damage. What's the point? The tongue can be the same way. If I don't control the tongue, keep it within its bounds, if I don't let God have rule over it, it can bring a world of unrighteousness, ungodliness. It can, what does it mean when it says it, it sets on fire the whole course of nature? Your life is going to be turned upside down if we don't learn what to say and how to say it. And so the tongue has so much power, and we've got to use that power in the right way. Now, here's the good thing. That tongue that's so powerful, as we've just seen, can it be used for good things? Oh, you bet it can. The gospel, it's God's power to save, right? Romans 1 verse 16. How does that gospel get out to people? Romans chapter 10 says we need somebody to say it. Go into all the world. How can they hear without a preacher? Uh, Mark 16 verse 15. Christians are to take on their tongue the gospel and go into all the world. That same tongue that can do so much damage if used rightly can uplift and encourage and save lost souls from destruction. What's the difference? We've got to let God control the tongue. I want you to look, if you would, in James chapter 3, and notice what the writer is going to say now in verse 7 following. For every kind of beast and bird of reptile and creature of the sea is tamed and has been tamed by mankind. Now listen to this, though. But no man can tame the tongue. It's an unruly evil full of deadly poison. What's the point here? Should we just give up and not even try? Man has tamed. You can imagine, I remember as a kid, we went to a circus. And I remember my mom and dad setting me up on the back of an elephant. 2,000 however many pound elephant. It's just like a little horse riding it around at the circus. Man has tamed every kind of animal that you can imagine. But then the writer says this, but here's what man can't do. No man can tame the tongue. What's the point of that verse? Is it that the tongue can't? No, it's not that the tongue can't be tamed. It's these two little words. No man can tame the tongue. Can the tongue be tamed? Absolutely but not by man himself. What we're talking about is this. Paul said this in Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. With God, all things are possible. Luke chapter 1 says, by myself, I'm going to have a constant uphill battle with the tongue, but with God, I can tame the tongue. That unruly World of iniquity, fire of evil that, that sets on uh, course the nature of man and is set on fire by hell itself. And with God's help, I can tame the tongue. How? I've got to learn to think correctly. You know, what's the tongue, really? It's an indicator of what's on our mind and in our heart, right? Here's what I need to do. I need to learn to control what I think. And only God can help me with that. Proverbs 23, verse 7, the Bible says, As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. We are what we think. And if I can learn to have the mind of Christ, Philippians 2, verse 5, to think on those things which are good, pure, noble, right, just, holy, Philippians 4, verses 6 through 9, if I can learn to avoid thinking about the things of the world Satan wants me to think on and get those words and those things out of my head, put more of God's Word in my heart. Friend, my tongue and the whole outlook of my life is going to change. And so the tongue can be tamed, but it's going to take God's help to do that. You know, one of the more contradictory things that we'll notice about the tongue is sometimes we use it in such even contradictory ways. And James mentions this. Look in James 3. Have you ever heard somebody say something really good and nice and kind and then almost in the same breath turn around and say something bad about somebody else? 
Here, they were saying good things. The next thing I know, they took that tongue and stabbed somebody in the back with it. What causes that? We haven't let God control it yet. And it's contradictory. Look in James 3 and notice what James says in verses 9 and 10. With it, with the tongue, we bless our God and Father, and with it, with it we curse men who have been made in the image of God. Out of the same mouth proceed blessings and cursings, my brethren. These things ought not to be so. And then he shows how it's contradictory. Does a, a freshwater spring send forth bitter water from the same opening? Can a fig tree, my brethren, bear olives, or grapevine bear frigs? Thus no spring yields both salt and fresh water. What's he saying? Whatever is in the heart is what's going to come out of the tongue, right? When we think about the, you know, somebody who blesses God in one breath and curses man in the other, has he not also just cursed God who, who made man in his image? And he doesn't even realize that. And so he says a fig tree is not going to produce olives. A uh, freshwater spring isn't going to produce salt water. It doesn't happen that way. Each produces after its kind. And here's the point. A godly person with his tongue produces after his kind. If he's a follower of God, then friend, he's going to say the things he ought to say. And again, we're not saying, please don't misunderstand me, we're not saying that from time to time we don't mess up and make mistakes with the tongue. But as a general rule, you can tell a lot about, listen carefully now, as a general rule, you can tell a lot about a person just by listening to them speak. What do our words, what does our tongue and the words we use say about us? You see, my friend, we need to speak the truth in love. Ephesians 4, verse 15. And as Paul would say in Galatians 4, verse 16, Have I become your enemy? Because I tell you the truth. Then James is going to close out this chapter in James 3, about verses 13 through 18, by giving us some pointers to help us gain the type of wisdom up here that we need to have so that our tongue will be what God wants it to be. Look in James 3, beginning in verse number 13. James says, Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show by good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. This wisdom, this is not what you need, this wisdom does not ascend from above, but is earthly, sensual, and demonic. For where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and every evil thing are. Well, what kind do we need then? Verse 17. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Now the fruit of righteousness is sown by those who make peace. And when I think about the kind of things I need to get out of my heart, self-seeking, envy, always having to be first, being jealous of what everybody else may or may not have, uh, grumbling, complaining, gossip, running other people down. Let's get that out of our heart. And instead, let's fill our heart and mind with peace, with love, with gentleness, with kindness, with forgiveness, with mercy, with all the good things that God wants us to have in our heart and mind. And you know, if I can fill my heart with those kind of things, the devil's not going to have near as much a place to get a foothold in my life. I want you to think about Proverbs 16, verse 3. The Bible says this, Commit your works to the Lord and your thoughts will be established. Do you ever have trouble controlling what goes on up here? You know, the proverb writer tells us how to get a handle on that. Listen to that verse again. Commit your works to the Lord and your thoughts will be established. How do I stay good up here? By staying busy out here. Do you see the connection between faith and works, even as it relates to our tongue? If I'm out busy doing the work of God, Commit your works. To, if I'm out committing my works to God, I'm trying to help the poor. I'm trying to help those who are in need. I'm trying to spread the gospel. I'm trying to live a Christian life. If I, my life is busy and filled with God things, godly things, 
When's the devil going to have an opportunity to get in? Well, it's going to be a whole lot harder for him to do that. And so we're reminded of James chapter 1, verse number 22. My friend, I want you to think again about what the Bible says in that powerful verse. Be doers of the Word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. If a person can't control what he says, can I be honest with you today? His Christianity is nowhere near what it needs to be. If I can't control the words that are coming out of my mouth, and friend, in all honesty, every thought has not been brought captive into the obedience of Christ. 2 Corinthians 10 verse 3. I've yet to let God have complete rule over my heart and my life. And there are still things I need to repent of. And there are still things I need to change. And I need to then submit myself fully to the will of God. And so if you're not a child of God, friend, more than anything, we want to invite you to obey the gospel. Do you believe that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life? John 14, verse 6. Believing that, would you turn from a life of sin and turn from the devil? Jesus said in Luke 13, 3, unless you repent, you'll all likewise perish. Having turned from sin, would you with your mouth make the good confession Jesus is the Christ? Romans 10, verses 9 and 10, Paul said, with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Having made that good confession... Would you do what Jesus said to have every sin forgiven and to be saved? Jesus said this, He that believes and is baptized will be saved. Mark 16, 16. Peter told Christians on the day of Pentecost, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. Acts 2, verse 38. And may God help each of us. May God help every one of us as Christians to truly control the tongue, to say what God wants us to say, to encourage and uplift others, and ultimately to bring honor and glory to God with our tongue. Join us next time as we study more about faith and works. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the gospel of Christ? The gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the churches of Christ that reaches the whole world with the gospel through TV, streaming, free media, and internet. Our motto is truly to take the whole gospel to the whole world. We believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious groups today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your wallet. This is the Gospel of Christ. We encourage you to visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study material, as well as video and audio from our lessons. If you would like to have a copy of today's lesson, please visit our website and fill out a media request form. You can also reach us by emailing mail at thegospelofchrist.com or call us at 844-6-GOSPEL or write to us at the address on your screen. You can also get our Gospel of Christ app on your handheld devices for those on the go. Gospel of Christ.